Happy Boxing Day, everybody. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Happy Boxing Day, everybody. Oh my gosh, my voice keeps cracking. Hello, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. And notice, there are two iron golems in here. This is bad. <laughs> it looks like a band photo, like a 1980s new wave band. Hi, how are you? Uh, so there are two iron golems in here. That's not good. <clears throat> it's not good. I don't know what's wrong with my voice. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, this is not good. It's it's actually very not good. And I noticed nobody's uh, nobody's gardening. Nobody's farming. So this is, I think, a, a bad sign. So the two iron golems can't happen unless I have 20 villages in here. And there shouldn't be more than 19 villages in here. So this has me a little worried. So I'm making some changes. I'm moving stuff. So <sighs> these guys, these five villagers on the bottom and five on the next row up, they all count towards the population of the village because they're within the radius. I think it's up to uh, to here. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's up to here. Boop. So I need to move these guys out. The ones up top shouldn't matter, but what I think happened, and what I seriously hope happened, is that at one point I changed this villager. Somewhat recently, I seem to remember doing that. Or this one. I think I moved this, the villager that was in here. And I moved him down and along over to the little, you know, crushing chamber over there. But uh, when I did that, I probably would have just sort of brought him down down here and then along and while he was down here he would have been contributing to the population of the village while up there he, he's not so at that point now I don't know how that how that translated into oh let's breed another villager unless there was some other movement related thing going on where I moved somebody out so the population dipped down and then I moved down to like 18 and I moved, I, I don't know. Oh, hello. Oh, look at you. You're super sweet. Boop. <clears throat> Actually, let's do a screenshot of that. Uh, not with you in the way. Hello. So anyway. So I decided I need to move all these villagers out of the village radius. So I started building new stalls along here. And I've been moving them over, starting with the two down here. And so I've removed these and rebuilt them so they're facing this way. And the village radius should end right here. And that should allow me to build this and then another set here facing in and I think Another row facing this way. So I should be able to get three sets of these inside or before this, so outside of the village perimeter, which will help, I think. Uh, so it's a lot of work. I'm not going to do this on camera. Um, yeah. So I'm going to keep all these guys. So right now I had, I had 12 uh, stalls along here, three in three layers so that was 36 villagers and this is I went 10 here just to make it a little bit easier to manage and I'm sorry about the dog hang on a second let me see what Bowser wants so anyway uh, so I need to do that move that and then what will happen is once these 10 villagers are not contributing to the population cap here. I'll get actually a lot more villagers breeding in here. Uh, and so I'll be able to manage a bit more. I'm a little concerned that the lack of farming suggests that they're above, either at, hopefully it's just at, but maybe it's above the village population cap, which has me a little worried. So maybe I should pull one of these out and uh, just ditch them. I've got a couple of candidates. Got a couple nitwits in here. The villagers are kind of... Oh, hi. Hi. Sorry, don't let me disturb you. So this guy... Hi! You're not really doing anything. Um, so I could do that. 
but since I was digging this area out I had to make this wider I decided to just open up this whole side of the village so it's a little bit more visible um, no particularly good reason for that just make it easier to get villagers in and out I can do it from this side over here in addition to this so if I need to bring them into a one of the stalls I can do it from over there or <clears throat> once I tear down all these stalls then uh, I can bring them up along here and then in in between if I build up the second set. Let me take care of this because that's going to be annoying. Uh, and then, uh, then I have other things to do. Hey, stop it. Hey. Whoa. There we go. Much better. He actually hurt me. So other things I want to do. Um, this. This was a uh, attempt at building a prototype test sugarcane farm. And it works. Slowly, because there's one sugarcane plant in there. I have an observer that checks to see when the sugarcane grows up to the third level. And then this piston pushes out and boop. And ideally all the sugarcane comes in here. But what I'm finding, of course, is that it does not. It, the sugarcane ends up... Some of it ends up falling on the plant itself. Uh, so we lose, this is not a particularly fully efficient sugarcane farm. But I have a way to fix it. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. So I think ultimately I want to replace all these sugarcane areas here. Which work really easily. I mean, these are great for harvesting a bunch of sugarcane all at once. Just walk with your head at level. You're not looking down and then just pick up all the sugar cane that falls. But it does rely on somebody to A, be around for the sugar cane to grow, and B, be uh, come and pick up the sugar cane after it's been harvested. Uh, so that's not super convenient. And any time that it sits here full grown, um, it's doing no good. <laughs> so having, uh, so I'm thinking we'll use the observer blocks to take care of the problem and, and although I do want to put put my uh, farm in here just essentially replace these uh, for the time being I think what I want to do is I'm going to build it into this wall here so back behind here should be nothing but rock stone and um, so we should be able to take advantage of this space to build at least the first one and then I can uh, go on and build more. So I need a bunch of space. So I'm going to dig some stuff out and start building, and then I will show you what I'm doing. Okay, so there, here's the basic setup. Um, I have a chest here, which will collect the uh, the sugar cane, a rail uh, on which a hopper minecart will go and go back and forth and we'll pick up the drops from the sugar cane on, the, on the, the where the plant is itself. It's the important part is a hopper minecart will pick up through a full block of, of dirt, whereas a hopper by itself will not. So I've got the water here because this is where the, uh, the water goes. Um, and I need the water to grow the sugar cane. Right, and then I just put, I'm gonna use note blocks as my unmovable block here, but you could use uh, obsidian or furnaces, a variety of other things. And I have glowstone up here so that the sugar cane will grow and that things won't actually, uh, you know, um, spawn here. That's important. And then the reason I need a, a movable block here is because on a block behind, I'm going to put a sticky piston, which I don't have in my pocket. Uh, sticky piston, and then I will need, I can put this in there for now, and then I will need some slime blocks. Or, <clears throat> yeah, some slime blocks. So we're going to put a sticky piston right here, boop, putting forward. We're going to put down one and then 12 slime blocks. And this will break the sugarcane plants, of course. Boop. Uh, and then this, they need the the uh, the note blocks here because 
we don't want the slime blocks moving them so I need no blocks also up here so basically making a full ring around the uh, the slime blocks I'm gonna put one here as well boop and then also one in front in front of the the note block so when the the slime blocks move out they don't pick up anything and that they will actually work so then we could actually plant this here but in the meantime we need to have something else which I have right here <clears throat> observer block so the So when the plants grow up to here, I want something to be able to look at it and go, oh wait, right? So this is the observer block, that's what we use it for. And since we're on that topic, so the, oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Hang on a second. No, so we need the note block here. Uh, note block there is fine. And we need a note block one <sighs> Grr. Okay. <clears throat> yes. I'm gonna put some light down there because I dug out more than I needed to. So we will uh rectify that later. We'll fill all this in. And then I need to get back out of here. So, and I'm short enough block. <sighs> and I've got that static in the audio again. Okay, sorry, let me see if I can correct this and then we'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so. Okay, so the idea here is that when the this sugarcane plant grows up to be three tall, it will trigger this observer block, which will then trigger this uh, block here, which should trigger the Uh, it doesn't need to be a note block uh, Which will trigger the piston pushing out momentarily the slime blocks and bumping off all of the Sugarcane now instead of being able to fly out here. I will put up glass in the front Which will cause all the sugarcane to fall Into uh, on top of the dirt blocks, which will then be picked up by the uh, by the hopper minecart. So let's grab. I have some sugar cane here. <clears throat> let's go plant. Okay, so here's our sugar cane plants. And what grows up here when it goes up to three, three tall. Woohoo! And they all drop down and end up back in my pocket because they, I don't have the hopper minecart in place. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically how it works. This is going to be pretty cool. Yeah, and of course some of it goes flying, but that's fine. Soon I'm going to be just drowning in sugar can well not not from just one of these, but I think in the space that I have for these three, I can fit probably four or more of these machines, and I can bring back this uh this guy here. So right now with these this is a nine by nine block, and so that's 81. So I have about 40 sugar cane plants per per patch um, this is only 12 but if I can build up you know four of these that will that that'll up my output automatically um, uh, faster than than it needs to uh, be for me to continue doing this manually if that made any sense okay so that's the basic idea now what I need to do is oh ah I need more note blocks I need a few more things. I need more note blocks. I need to put some note blocks along the back side of this. And then 
I need to fill this in with stone or stone blocks or something, stone bricks or something. And, uh, and then I need glass. So, uh, to do the front and uh, put in the minecart. So, okay, let me, uh, let me go make some more note blocks because I don't have the, but I need to do them up here. Uh, oh, actually I do. How many do I need? Okay, well, let me take care of that. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so I filled in all the back there. Well, I'm going to lose that torch. That's fine. Uh, and then let's just make sure that I didn't screw anything up. Yes! All right. Very good. So this is practically done. I just have to clean up a little bit. Put on the glass front. Cover this, but I'll probably just cover it with uh, stone bricks. Oh, no, wait. No, let's... Okay, well, I'll, I'll figure this out. We'll, we'll cover it up with... I have this uh, smooth uh, polished andesite, which is kind of the the way all this is designed to look anyway, so I'll probably just do that. So it blends back in. And then I have the glass in the front. I have to put the minecart in. <clears throat> Oops. Get more of the andesite. Let's uh let's take care of all that and see what we can do. <clears throat> okay, one more thing I forgot. Um in for the slime blocks are gonna come out and, and hit this um, so they there needs to be a row of immovable blocks along the front here which isn't the prettiest looking thing in the world but it's necessary uh, so mine card with hopper go boop the only downside is you have to sort of put up with the noise of that all the time so let me um, I have some let me put away some of the stuff I have some glass that I have sort of set aside for another project. Um, but, and figure out what color to make the glass. Thinking green. How much do I need? Any 12, one, two, three, four. So I need uh, 96 pieces of glass in whatever color I choose. There we go. Okay, let me get some, uh, let me, I don't know that I have any green dye down here. And I don't have any green dye in a, <clears throat> in a project box yet. So I may have to go pick some up. Yeah, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, we're done. Uh, out of my uh, out of my face okay so here we go um, that looks about as pretty as it's gonna get the chest is still accessible because this is glass above it I the bottom two rows of glass I don't actually technically need um, but so if we go here and take that did I pick that back up yes so if we want we want to test this Woohoo! And it picks it up and deposits it here. Nice. Okay, so we're uh, so good. We're in business. There we go. Cool. So that's what I was trying to accomplish here for today. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty slim. It's only a few blocks deep, uh, about four blocks at its worst. So. Um, but there we go. It makes that noise. Whatever. Oh, picked up a couple more. Oh, that's the thing. The um, the minecart picks up all of the drops along the dirt instantly. It pulls them through right away. Um, I have two hoppers here because the minecart, as it rolls across, I didn't want to put in a comparator thing to sort of prevent it from sort of taking off again. Uh, so as it rolls across each one that it goes across here it'll drop one item off into so it may take you know 
12 plants. If they all full grow fully before it drops, it's 24. That means it, it may take 12 passes here. It'll drop off one into each of the two hoppers. Uh, it may take 12 passes to get all of the things out, but that's more than quickly enough before all the plants grow again. So I'm not too worried. It's not going to get overloaded. So there we go. Here we have a 100% efficient, um, no drop, no drop loss uh, sugarcane farm using the observer block. I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with this particular arrangement, but I sort of uh, came up with it as a way of fixing the problems that I encountered with this guy here. So I'm going to tear this one down because it's not really doing what I wanted it to do. And then I'm going to clear out these guys and build more. So either I'll put in more wall units along the, the outside and leave in the fields for extra yield, um, or I'll just uh, let it go and uh, or replace them and put in these guys. So it's 13, 14, 15 blocks long, uh, which is longer than this, right? So this is, you know, 9 and 18. So I could put in two and because it's only like four deep, I could actually put in two back to back in two long. So I could put in four units on where these sugar cane are. And as I said, that should yield uh, 48, you know, that 48 96 96 uh, sugar cane per growth cycle plus the five in here I, I think we'll we'll get close to what this does but without having to manually harvest so I think that's it um, as I said I don't think this is a unique design but uh, if you're curious to see a uh, tutorial let me know because I can I can certainly do one um, and it shouldn't be that difficult and it's relatively cheap to build as you see um, really just the only expensive parts I think are the hopper minecart and the, the hoppers here and for the most part the note blocks I mean it's just it's just wood uh, but you can use obsidian or furnaces or whatever pumpkins or melons you can use there's a variety of things you could use oh actually I could replace all these with melons I might do that because that might be prettier to look at but anyway that's it. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's been Minecraft Land Party, and I will see you next time. All right? Bye.